And I wish I could be there, but I'm going to be in Texas. I'm so sorry. Sending lots of love to you. Hey John, it's Vin Skelson. I'm so sorry that I can't be there in person with you tonight, but you know I don't go out. I mean, come on, it's dark out. You know, I, I just, I don't. But if I was gonna go out for anybody, it would be for you, but I don't go out. You understand what I'm saying, right? Oh John, I have such fond memories of our dealings together over the years, you at the Capitol Theater and various other venues and outdoor places where you put on shows. We've known each other for decades now, and throughout that period, you've always been there for me, and I hope that, with the exception of tonight, I, I've always been there for you. But it's, like I said, it's, it's November, it's getting cold, it's you know, dark. The Bayonne Bear says hi, he's still alive. He lives in the woods in the old uh, Hudson County Park in Bayonne. He's a very old bear now, he doesn't, uh, he doesn't dance anymore. Doesn't really go out either. Otherwise you'd be here to growl into the microphone. Take care, man. We gotta have lunch someday, John. Adios, compañero. You know, I first met John Cher 100 years ago, back in the 70s. And it was right when the Capitol Theater was opening, and John had the foresight. The Fillmore East had closed in 1971, and that was coincidental with me coming to WNEW-FM. And John didn't want to go into New York City, he wanted to do it in Jersey. And one of the reasons I related to John right away was that he was our age. You know, Bill Graham, Ron Delsner, the big promoters of the time, were older guys. I wasn't sure they really loved the music. I thought, eh, maybe this, this was a way for them to make a living. John loved it, lived it, and had a great ear. He could pick out those new artists and always insisted, like Bill Graham did, that the headliners always have somebody new opening for them. In fact, there was a show at the Capitol Theater around 1974, I think it was, John Sebastian headlining with Bruce Springsteen. Good story. And Sebastian heard Springsteen in the sound check and said, I, I can't follow this guy. He's got to be the closing act. So the show went on. It was Dan Fogelberg, John Sebastian, Bruce Springsteen. How much would you pay to see that oh. in this day and age? And John was a Jersey guy. You know, even though he went to school on Long Island College like I did at Adelphi, he went to LIU. Uh, he was a guy that always had Jersey in his roots, stayed in Jersey, Asbury Park. He pioneered what was then the Brendan Byrne Arena, now the Izod Center, opened with Springsteen shows, and eventually convinced Frank Sinatra. Sinatra, who had said, I'm not going to play New Jersey anymore, turned his back on it. He flew out to the West Coast and convinced his representatives to play the Brendan Byrne Arena. We did so many broadcasts at the Capitol Theater, starting in 76. Dennis Elsis has a film. He'll play for you some of the excerpts of those concerts. Southside Johnny did New Year's Eve shows there for many years. 1977 to 78 was a very special one, which you'll also see in Dennis's film. And John was always into new music. He was never content just to pine, you know, put the big axe on and make a lot of money in one shot. He always gave the younger guys a break, and so many of them came back and did special shows and favors for him later when they made it. John uh, was a very, very special promoter, and you know, even though this is like, this is your life, John, share in the twilight, in the twilight at all. He's still doing it, big time. He's on the back nine, but there's still a lot of great holes to play. John Shear, I salute you. You've been a friend for many years. You've been a wonderful entrepreneur and, and a man that has given so much to the music world and so much to the community. We all salute you on this very special night. John Shear. Thank you. <laughs> Little.
Rachel, do you have some wise ass thing to say now? <laughs> Hi, John, it's Dennis Elson. And once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far away, back in 1971, I was just starting out at WNEW-FM, and you were just beginning to present shows at the Capitol Theater in Passaic. By 1972, I'd become the station's music director, and you were quickly turning the Capitol into a major concert venue. Now, in addition to being on the air, one of my responsibilities was to compile and record a weekly list of the best shows in the area and the Capitol was a prominent part of that rundown. What was the concert scene like in those days? Well, here are the actual concert happenings for the end of May, the beginning of June, 1972. Hi, this is Dennis Elsis with Concert Happenings on WNEW-FM. Mollo and White Trash are the Capitol <laughs> Theater in Georgia. <laughs> on Staten Island oh, on Friday. God. The New York Dolls are at the Palm Room of the Hotel Diplomat Monday night. At the clubs this weekend, Mary Clayton's at my father's place. Jake and the Family Jewels and Gun Hill Road are at Folk City, and Buzzy Linhart's at the Bitter End. Dave Mason is coming to the Academy of Music June 3rd. The new writers of the Purple Sage and Eric Anderson will be at Carnegie Hall June 4th. Tom Rungard will be there June 8th. And Elvis Presley in his first New York appearance is coming to Madison Square Garden June 10th. Tickets go on sale tomorrow for the Schaefer Music Festival in Central Park. They're available at the Woman's Skating Ring and all Corvette stores. Opening night is June 15th with Jose Feliciano and Billy Joel. It was a great time to see live music. And WNEW-FM wanted to share that experience with its listeners. A strong relationship was being established between you and your staff and all of us at the station. And on the night of June 19th, 1976, we did our very first broadcast from the Capitol. Richard Neer is hosting from backstage. And that night, I was lucky enough to join him. Ladies and gentlemen, the Grateful Dead. Silencio, por favor. Please. It's real loud in here. Give us a minute so we can tune our instruments. We don't do it by machines. So we have to do it right here in front of you. So. Thank you, Pat. And uh, backstage with Dennis Elsis and Allison Steele. Al Bernstein is here as well. And you can hear the Grateful Dead. They are on stage and tuning. And we'll be tuning for another minute or so. So the music is going to be just incredible inside at the Capitol Theater. And uh, I want to thank everybody, John Shear, the band, everybody involved for helping to put this thing together tonight and bringing it to you live over WNEW-FM. This is our first live concert on the air from the Capitol Theater in Passaic. Okay, I think we're just about ready to go. Let's go to the stage now and the Grateful Dead.
we are here backstage at the Capitol Theater in Passaic, New Jersey. The Grateful Dead have just re-entered and gone on stage, and uh, we'll be tuning up for about a minute or so. <laughs> Meanwhile, we have John Sher here, who of course uh, runs the concerts here at the Capitol Theater in Roosevelt Stadium and uh, in Asbury Park as well. John has also uh, set up a lot of the dates on the Grateful Dead tour. Where did the dead go from here, John? Uh, Philadelphia, the Tower Theater, uh, Monday through Thursday and then a uh, day off and then four days in Chicago and then uh, they come back here to finish up the tour at Roosevelt Stadium. Okay, what was behind the decision to do a lot of uh, smaller houses like this? Uh, the Dead felt aesthetically that their music uh, didn't belong in arenas and in uh, ballparks and uh, it was a real conscious effort. They were also very aware of the, the problem of playing small halls and that's why the tickets were more or less limited to uh, to the Deadhead fan club, and uh, so far it's been very successful. There's been very little trouble in uh, most of the cities. Uh, the shows have been uh, outstanding, and uh, the band's real happy, and it's really motivating them to tour a lot more. They seem just about ready to go, so we're going to switch right now to the stage for the Grateful Dead Part 2 from the Capitol Theater in Passaic, New Jersey. Live from the Capitol on WNAWFM, we'll continue to provide our audience and fans with some incredible concert experiences and sometimes a bit of rock and roll history. Like this wonderful surprise on New Year's Eve 1977 with Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes. We thought the show and the broadcast was over, but another New Jersey native who had been partying backstage had some other ideas. Here's my friend Richard Neer doing the play-by-play. -play. stay with them, because this is some New Year's Eve. I don't have to tell you how long it's been since uh, Bruce has played the New York, New Jersey area. Last time I can remember was uh, the Palladium in October and November of 1976, so it's been well over a year. And you can tell by the way Bruce was playing with Southside and uh, with Robert Gordon that he was hot to go on stage. He has done this in the past. And we did think the show was over when we went back to the studio, but, uh, and everybody else here did think it was over. A lot of the people in the audience left. Let's get on play. I'm drunk and I'm But, uh, you can hear Bruce. He's drunk and silly as a fool, and he's gonna play. And we apologize in advance if it doesn't sound like it does on the record, but it's a last minute thing. Let's listen to it. Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, live from the Capitol Theater of Passaic, New Jersey. kept coming, and sometimes the venues were larger, including Roosevelt Stadium and eventually Giant Stadium. 
We were all there in June 1979 for another WNEW-FM John Chair production with a lineup of Poco, Todd Rundgren and Utopia, The Outlaws, <coughs> and this band is the headliner. When we said, when we said rock returns to Giant Stadium, this is what it's all about. Please welcome Boston! Just a great song celebrating the power and excitement of live rock and roll music. We've certainly shared a lot of that in the past. But hey John, you're still doing the same thing, and so am I. These days I'm on the air every weekday at WFUV and weekends on Sirius XM Classic Vinyl. And I'm bringing back concert happenings tonight. Just to let everyone know that you and Metropolitan Entertainment have just presented Jeff Rotel and Tony Bennett in the past week different nights, of course. And coming up next week, your shows include Ricky Lee Jones at the Concert Hall and Hot Tuna at the Beacon. John, I like to use the phrase rock and roll never forgets. For me, it's more than just music and the memories. It's the loyalty and friendship that I truly value and respect. Congratulations, and keep on rocking. And for more, call the WWFM Concert Happenings Hotline, 212-697-7997. Very nice. I have no idea what happens if you call that number anymore. <laughs> you probably still are. <laughs> well, thank you very much for uh, those. Uh, Annie Haslam, uh, Richard Neer, Vince Gulsa, and Dennis Elsis. Uh, continuing in the This Is Your Life uh, Team. We have uh, some people who would like to say a few words here. Uh, let's start with, I guess, uh, maybe you want to come up and use this microphone, but uh, start with Marty Scott. Marty, you're